my name is Benji Claus and welcome to Dice vs Cards. It is that time of year again, jadies and gentlemen. And what sort of human being would I be without presenting you with a top 10 list of Christmas gift ideas? Like last year's moving images, which are still wonderfully insightful even if I do say so myself, we'll be breaking down these lists into four categories. Lightweight, medium weight and heavyweight games which we've already published but for a rare treat today, we're doling out some stocking filler ideas. All of the games here are small box, portable, and normally towards the lighter end of things. But they all can act as filler games as well. Just what you need at this time of year. With that introduction over, let's learn how to count from 1 to 10. Number 1. Point Salad is what you get when you take the colloquial name for a game swimming with points and make it into its own game. It's a gloriously simple concept where you have three communal decks of two sided cards up for grabs. With one side representing the cards you ultimately need that will score the objectives that can be found on the other side. Taking one of those cards and placing it in your tableau face up on the side of your choosing you then have the option of, once per turn, flipping one of your cards to the other side. Et voila, you have an instantly gratifying and fast-paced multiplayer filler game. Often you find elegance and quality in the simple and straightforward, and Point Salad exemplifies that notion perfectly. Number 2. The Crew, The Quest for Planet 9 is the new it when it comes to cooperative trick-taking games. It's hard to take a patience-like game and give it legs in our hobby, but the crew delivers in spades, trying to add some thematic, albeit paper-thin immersion, to the multiplayer taking of tricks. It's just one of the strings to its bow. The main one, however, being the rule-bending structure of each new mission, that flips the script and forces you to adapt your strategy accordingly. All within the confines of a communication limits game, where at best you can give limited information to your teammates. It really is fascinating to see mechanics that are hella old at this point grow into something that little bit special. Number 3. Cartographers is a roll and write or flip and write that's not quite as much of an evolution than the crew is, but it's still showing ways that this old but new genre can spread its wings. Using polyomino shapes as the platform for drawing on a map, what sets this apart is that you have partial foresight of what objectives are upcoming throughout the course of four rounds that represent the seasons of the year. So forward planning is absolutely key if you're going to succeed. There's also some take that elements that you'll have you scribbling over your opponent's pads, trying to obstruct their wonderfully crafted landscapes. One thing's for sure, writing, or in this case drawing shapes on a pad, ain't going anywhere anytime soon. Number 4. Letter Jam. It's a straight laced word game with a scrambled twist. At this point in the year 2020, you'd think that the toys and games industry would just about have exhausted every morsel of originality from word games by now, but Letter Jam tries something new anyway. A self-professed combination of Hanabi and Scrabble, this game is one part wordplay and one part process of elimination where all players can see all but one letter around the table that forms a word. Then throughout each of the five rounds, clue givers will help those around the table fill in the blanks and identify their own letters that make up their own singular word, which just so happen to be determined at the start of the game by an app that assists the game. There's nothing complicated here, just an original thought or two that's very welcome. Number 5. Villagers is a portable city building and card drafting game that sees you as the founder of a new village trying to rebuild after a great plague. Things start small with only a couple of villager cards, but then it's all about the drafting and trying to pick synergistic townsfolk all from a number of different categories or industries which is the better way to describe it. 
you'll find plenty of these choices will combine with others to unlock even stronger villager cards and so on and so forth. It's a delightful game that has a great deal more replayability than that overview might suggest. There's a hell of a lot of content in this here game and you'll find a great deal of variety each time you play. Number 6 On Tour is another roll and write on the list. Okay, shoot me, but they tend to be in small boxes and they're a dime a dozen. Here, you're a music band planning a nationwide tour across the United States. And first you'll be writing numbers between 1 and 100 on an empty space, based on the numbers of a communal dice roll. This is done simultaneously by all players, but there are also communal requirements and bonuses to where you place your numbers with the ultimate idea being to be able to draw a line from smallest number to largest across the map. In so doing, gaining extra points for how efficient your route is and how many states that you previously circled that are passed through. This type of thing's been done before, but rarely with such panache. Number seven, Illusion, is an overt deduction game with a suitable amount of color splash. It should be said at the outset that it has not been explicitly defined as colourblind friendly, but on the whole it seems that most people have had no problem playing it. To the game though, and you'll each be trying to place cards in an appropriate order that reflects the percentage amount of a particular colour on the card you'll be playing from the top of the deck. Players then alternate placing cards until one of you cries foul and thinks that a mistake has been made. There literally is nothing particularly complicated about this game, it's just a solid little visually abstract filler card game that may even sharpen your visual awareness skills. Number 8. Trap Words is, you guessed it, a word game, but this time a team based one, borrowing more than a little from the classic square game Taboo. Here, instead of there being predefined words that cannot be used as clues for your teammates to guess the score in word, it will be your opponents secretly deciding which words can't be used, precipitating the need for your clue giver to give vague and obscure clues while still giving your teammates a chance to guess the word. Each room you and your team advance to before facing the end monster is the harder things get as the number of trap words increase as you go. The final monster adds its own rule tweaks for the final battle and it's a straight up race to the finish line. Number 9. Silver and Gold is the last roll and or flip and write on this list I promise. But whilst it's the simplest one so far, it's probably the one most likely to be accessible to any audience. We're in Tetris-like Polyomino Town here again. We're filling in these shapes to try and fully mark every space on map cards, of which you'll always have two to mark on at any given time. And with everyone making the same shape, it's the maps you choose that will dictate how well you're able to complete said maps and gobble up as many points as possible over the course of four rounds. Silver and Gold is a fast-paced and catchy little game that really does have that little something addictive running through its gameplay veins. Number 10. Walking in Burano is a card drafting and set collection game where you find yourself building and decorating colourful houses on the canal fronts of Venice. Drafting cards that you then decide whether and where to build from the ground floor up in order to accommodate visitors and tourists that will give you extra points the more you meet their criteria and conditions. The almost push your luck nature of the drafting where you can either take more cards and less raw resources or vice versa is a really satisfying mechanism that adds a great deal of strategy to what's on offer. If you couple this with a number of card placement requirements and a limited means to bypass those rules and you have a fairly thinky, nicely rewarding game to sink your teeth into. So there you have it, our top 10 Christmas gift ideas in the category of stocking fillers. 
We hope you found something that you want to fit into your pocket, or at least somewhere on your person. But that completes this year's set of recommends. We hope you found these lifts helpful. Feel free to add your own suggestions in the comments below. However, that's it from me. I'll see you next time.